Podcast. Mike's Daily Podcast. Here we are the day after Halloween. It's always a letdown. And actually, I try not to get too Mike's Daily Podcast. Wrapped up in Halloween. It's episode 1930, 1930. How are you? I feel dirty. No, I don't. I'm kind of clean. I took a shower before I went to bed. And then I got into my dream scene. And I dreamed about the fact the weekend's almost here. And it's Friday and it's 549 and I'm going to shout. The Halloween's done. And I just... Mike's Daily Podcast. Last year, my lovely lady friend and I went down this street called Sandy Street in Podcastro Valley. Mike's... It's very busy. Daily... This year... Podcast. My lovely lady friend yeah. was hungry and she found this cool recipe and she put it together. And while she did that, I fixed something in the shower that was broken. And so we ate kind of late. And by the time we got over to Sandy, it was like almost nine. And we brought Basil the Boxer with us and we put a cowboy hat on him, a little cowboy hat. Which he seems to most stuff you put on his head he does he hates he he gets it off in about five seconds. I have these reindeer antlers around Christmas. He knocks them off. But the cowboy hat he kept on, and when he walks because his back legs he can't control them because of the degenerative myop- myelopathy. Like a leg will stomp down, will kind of do this kick, and I feel like he's doing the song. If I hadn't been for Cotton Eye Joe, I'd be married a long time ago. Where'd you come from? Where'd you go? So the cowboy hat fit. Next year, maybe we'll put a little banjo on him. But at any rate, he saw a lot of kids saw him and petted him. We finally got on Sandy Street. There were just enough families to see some cute costumes, cute little kids dressed up. One guy was dressed as Jesus. (laughs) And a kid walks... No, it was a teenager, I think. He's a little bit older than a kid. Dressed as Spider-Man Walks by and he goes Hey Jesus <laughs> And the guy goes I'm not Jesus I'm the other guy <laughs> We're okay And here's today's podcast picture Judas Are you Pontius Pilate Are you one of the disciples What And it, So that, that will be the next superheroes And Hollywood's already Mined the You know what Out of the whole Bible we Go back to Charlton Heston But Oh and and uh, What's his name Mel Gibson It was Jim Caviezel Was Jesus in that movie And then way back There was that movie That Martin Scorsese did The Passion of Christ Or something like that And it was Oh Goblin from Spider-Man I don't know not, 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 not that guy No Basil Not that guy either Hmm at any rate, that's either here or there, anywhere, or Basil barking and enjoying the Halloween or cafe anyway. Anyway, located somewhere in Podcaster Valley, Mont today, the last place on earth. Oh my gosh! So the podcast picture today, I will tell you, will not be from Halloween because I haven't uploaded those pictures yet. There are some great pictures though, I bet you. And oh, there's the. We do have. A cool little Halloween display going on in front of my house. And, well, it's a skeleton thing. I see, I okay, a couple things I've noticed about Halloween. As we're sort of zooming around around this uh, thought process of holidays and Halloweens and all that. But it was... Okay, the most popular costume I saw for men and boys, mostly boys, uh, Spider-Man. For women of all ages, cats. Anything cat-related. You with little kitty cat ears, that kind of thing. Lots of cats. So, I'm cool for cats. Cool for cats. That was the uh, overall theme. And then skeletons. People love... You can do all kinds of crazy things with skeletons. But it's such a letdown after the Halloween. And you're just you're just sort of processing it all. And trying to make heads or tails of, out of what you saw. 
And did you really enjoy it that much? And did you even have any power because of PG&E? I swear I'll find a podcast picture. Oh, maybe going over the Richmond Bridge. There was some interesting views that we saw when we crossed it uh, on our way to when we went to uh, Marin County. And then the power went out on us. And that was nice to just be to to pay for an Airbnb, which was like 150 bucks a night, which I guess is cheap for Airbnbs. And you don't have a dang you don't have any power. Welcome to our lovely town. Stay and enjoy and look around and oh, no power. Good luck with that. Well, I'll find some podcasts. Ooh. Oh, yes. Perfect. We're going to go with a little shot from my lovely lady friend took because her phone camera is way better than mine in Point Reyes Station. That's where the Cowboy Creamery is. And they make, they, they, they make some good stuff, but did I get to try any of it? No, because of the power outage last weekend. So see that picture at mikesdailypodcast.com. The new revised mikesdailypodcast.com, by the way. Because it needed a little bit, since we we are so podcast picture heavy with this podcast, and we we have been so since the beginning of the show. Um, it, it needs that little bit of extra room, extra space with the podcast picture. We might even have Basil in the picture. You can see it at mikesdailypodcast.com, dot com. What I ended up choosing, but I would love to say to you that I and then I. I love Halloween. I love the concept of Halloween and I can never come up with a costume. And I always come up with a costume idea after it's done. Like right now, I probably have an idea in my head that's going to pop out sometime before the end of this podcast. I just, I don't care about it before it shows up. I'm like, yeah, uh uh-huh. Oh, those are some cool front yard displays. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Ooh, spooky. Uh Uh-huh. As we go outside a cafe, anyway, we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast and in Podcaster Valley Mont. Oh, I love pumpkins. And I will have pumpkins sitting in my front room, the little pumpkin art, for the whole year because I love it so much. And I love Half Moon Bay with all the pumpkins and Pastorini Farms. I got to meet Scott Pastorini who works there. And, you know, I love the pumpkins that he grows. It's amazing. Pumpkins are awesome. So I love that about Halloween. I love that about fall. But just to get, you know, the pressure of coming up with creativity and looking nice, looking cool. But people came up with all kinds of cool things. Yesterday over at Kaiser, there's a Kaiser near where I work. And I went over there. They have a little courtyard. And I guess the employees that had pumpkin competitions, pumpkin designing competitions. And somebody made the pumpkin look like an eyeball and put an axe in it. That one, that one, I think top prize, because <laughs> that's how most of the employees feel at Kaiser. Ah, you want you want me to see how many patients today? You got to be kidding me! Oh, do I still have that somewhere? I haven't played that sounder in quite a while. <clears throat> I doubt I'll, I will find it because it should have been right there. Nope, it's not there. Oh well. I'm taking a breather. Sorry. Yeah, I'll probably find it after the show, but. It, oh, and you know what? And I have access to all my wonderful sound effects right now. So we have a little bit of Young Frankenstein. No! And we have this. <laughs> and we have Gene Hackman. I was going to make espresso. And we have this guy going. Yep. So yeah, some good stuff. And I used to have a, you got to be kidding me. But things get moved around in our library. And they get deleted, and then I don't ever find them again, so... Go! Yeah. Berkeley people. We'll wrap this show up with Berkeley people. Because at the end of my trip with my lovely lady friend over the weekend, where we went to that Airbnb where the power was out, we stopped in Berkeley to get Thai food at this place called Gecko's, where there is absolutely no parking! Except if you want to pay like 10 bucks an hour. And then the people in Gecko, it was funny. We were walking in and there are these two older ladies with these beautiful scarves, these shawls around them. 
And we open the door for them and they walk out. They don't even, they don't even say thank you. Uppity white old ladies. Ugh. Oh, God. Just... Uh, I'm old money. Old Berkeley money. Before all the hippies showed up. <sighs> yes. We love you so much, Berkeley. And you forget that about Berkeley. Is it that, that richy rich side? That uh, just along... And there will always be hippies in, in Berkeley. Or the idealists. The ones that are not so... Uh, well kept kempt the scruffy ones the ones that let your ha- their hair grow down don't necessarily wash it every day and don't mind wearing clothes that they pulled out of Salvation Army's rejection bin these are the people that will always make Berkeley and you'll always uh, associate with Berkeley not the richy rich people that live up in the hills but also at this get go first off <laughs> My lovely lady friend and I were having a funny discussion. And I think I was getting hangry. Hangry or hypoglyragic. One of those terms. And I pretended like I was, uh, you know, breaking... A, a glass on the table and she or and then she pretended like she was breaking something and then I went to take a plate and kind of like hit it on the table like I was going to break it in two and I actually did it on accident like I was so tired I couldn't tell my arm to stop before you actually did it you fool and I hit the thing <laughs> and I didn't break it but it made a big like <laughs> well not quite that but just a damn and everybody stared at me I was a little embarrassed but Berkeley, I can take about so much of you. Because you're hippie and cool and retro in 60s. But you're also too freaking expensive. They're, I don't know how anybody eats there. That's probably why everyone is so... They're, they're pulling the clothes out of the back of the Salvation Army's rejection bin. Okay. I guess I'll wrap it up here. I wanted to talk a little bit about the Food Network. Because I'll probably catch a little bit of that tomorrow. It's part of my weekend routine when I'm at my other place that I help out at. But there's usually the Food Network on. And I'm just not happy with the way the Food Network... Well, I I guess I, I'm... I just... This is the way it is. Is how they, they shoot things. There used to be a camera... A couple cameras set up. And they filmed in real time somebody cooking something. And you got a sense of everything that could go wrong and how it goes in real time. Now everything is so beautifully airbrushed. It looks so nice. And the, the, they film the food with these top, top of the line cameras. And the food looks delicious. And then the host, the host can't be, let's say the, the, the host has to be photogenic in some way. So they do all these tight camera shots. It's real food porn. It's crazy. And all these camera angles and the quick edits. And the host now, they have, they are, it is mandatory to do a cutesy wink at the camera. And they do, it's just, it's a weird world now. Where I don't think you get the sense of what it really is to cook. Cooking is dirty and you burn your hands because you pull the top of the pot lid off and you accidentally the steam comes out and burns your hand a little bit and it hurts and it's it's recipes that you're like what I don't even think they make that and they want that in the this ingredient this ingredient doesn't exist c'est no l'existe I guess that's French hmm is that French French the dolphin thank you Frenchy French the dolphin I guess I'm gonna wrap up the show because I think people are going to start showing up here. Oh! What? Frenchy French French. Hey, real quick. Let's say hi to some people outside a cafe anyway, real quick. Real quick. Real quick. Hello, oh, Matthew. This is Kelly. You heart gift shop supervisor. Was that a French song? It was. It's very romantic. Mike Matthew. French music is so romantic. Yes. We could talk about that some more. Or talk about Oingo Boingo. What's that? Boingo Boingo is the band that came, I think they came out of Anaheim. And Danny Elfman, who was the lead singer and, like, main composer dude, songwriter guy, he ended up doing all the music to, like, Tim Burton movies and The Simpsons. 
And I think he even did a couple other big... Uh, I can't think of them all. But anywho, and he's related to Jenna Elfman. So there you go. And I went on and on and on. They used to be known like the mystic order of the Oingo Boingo and all the, this, this other Oingo Boingo lore goes on and on. I was t- telling my lovely lady friend forever. And then she mentioned what Sebastian Gorka said to me when I went on and on about level 42. How are you doing that? Look who else is here. Oh, Mike, this is Floyd the Floor Man. And this is John Deere, the engineer, Mike. I don't know how you do that either. Wow, you sound really hoarse. You sound kind of Rod Serling-ish from Twilight Zone. Yeah, I do a little bit. That's... I'm a little bit hoarse, as you can tell. Well, that's okay. (laughs) There's a little horse right there. All right. Well, thank you for being on the show, everybody. It was great. You know, sometimes you get hoarse when you stay late at those parties for Halloween. And you're laughing and having a good time. Yeah, that's what happened. Okay. Next show, it's going to be the wonderful Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, and the brewmaster. Enjoy your weekend. Hopefully, we'll be back for the weekend and for next week. Uh, How was your Halloween? And oh, happy Dia de los Muertos, by the way. Uh, you can call me 336 MM daily. That's 3 plus 3 equals 6 MM as in Mike Matthews daily, as in what this podcast will try to do from the rest of the weekend and on. We'll see. We just took three days off. You can give me a break, can't you? Thank you. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.